Of course. It, okay, so we're live and I'm cleaning my glasses. I probably should have said, wait a second, but you know, I gotta be able to see what's going on here. There we go. All right, so welcome to Onset. I'm Daniel Norton. This is Dave. Seth's over there doing the thingy. And we got uh, Maddie on the comfortable chair. So today I'm actually surprised. Maybe the cheap people are also the late people. Are you the cheap, you're thrifty? Is that what you wanna? All of the above. All of the above, okay, good, okay. So, <laughs> I say that, I make that joke because uh, today we're gonna work with inexpensive lighting. Normally, um, here on set, I work with the lights that I have, which are Profoto strobes generally and Arri and Data Light, which are, you know, they're a little bit more of a professional high-end equipment, a little more expensive, so I get a lot of questions about, hey, can I do this with? Hey, can I do this with? So I thought, hey, I'll get a relatively inexpensive lighting kit and we'll see what we can do, right? We'll create some cool pictures. Um, I will say right from the beginning that one of the things that you end up paying for, and this is about all things photography for the most part, is consistency and longevity and reliability. Those three things, right? So if you're a professional photographer, you're paying more money for stuff because generally you need it to work all the time, right? So just keep that in mind. Like I, I could say, and this is always the, the thing, right? Oh, it's not the camera, it's not the thing, whatever. Oh, sure. These floodlights, which we're going to use primarily today, are fantastic. And we're going to create some really beautiful shots. But if I was consistently working every day as a photographer, they wouldn't be my first choice because over the long run, they're going to break down, right? So do, do you take this as this is stuff that can get you going, not this is your end all. Um, unless, you know, you don't light that often. I often say, how much do you light? How often are you going to use it? Because that's going to make a difference on what you want to purchase. Um, so... I just want to start off by saying that because otherwise all my expensive brands will start yelling at me, Daniel, why are you saying them? No, but no, that's the truth. That's really what you're paying for. And because that is the question, right? A lot of times people will wonder why am I buying such and such? Sure. A lens might be this, what, what are we using? This, this lens, you know, 2.8, whatever Canon L lens might be faster, right? So maybe you could say, well, I'm paying for the 2.8, but you know, you're also paying for the fact that it's tougher, right? If you, it can get banged around more, it's gonna last longer. It's, you know, it's, these, this is what you're paying for. It's same thing in lighting. This is, the, this is the truth of the matter. So anyways, um, in order to demonstrate most of this stuff, we're gonna just make some portraits. That's a pretty uh, common thing that people like to do with lighting. So I have Maddie here, who is a uh, professional portrait model. You must always spend all your money on the model and not on the equipment. <laughs> and we're gonna kind of walk through. So I grabbed a couple of different things. Three things, we'll see if we can get to all of them. And I will try to talk about all the equipment as we go through. And I'm just gonna go really basic. If you have questions, please ask. If you wanna see something, please ask. Um, we're gonna kind of challenge ourselves to get as many different things as we can from a very basic lighting kit. Um, and I think though, what I wanna start with is something that I don't typically use and that people always ask me about. So I figure we'll just use it and we'll see what we can do with it and see what happens, um, is, is this ring light. So this is a ring light, right? I'm not sure why they call it a ring light. I haven't figured that out yet, but it's a ring light. Yeah, so it's like a circle, right? So this is an LED one. It uh, is um, dimmable, right? So it's a, uh, I believe it's daylight balance. I probably should check that. It's probably daylight balance. Most of the uh, uh, LEDs come that way. It might even be bi, bi color. It's daylight, okay. So some people like these, right? They come to they come and say, ah, I heard I should get a ring light you know, and a beauty dish, because those are the two things that I hear a lot. Um, what a ring light produces, if you use it the normal way, is a very, very flat light, right? Because if I take my light, and, and I should point out this is $69, um, and I have it on a $250 stand. <laughs> you could just buy a cheap stand. I didn't want to open a brand new $220 light stand. They make light stands as cheap as $20. I just, I'm just using the C stand, because that's what I have. Um, in, the, in the case of the kit, I use the kit stand, so. But in this one, I'm using this. So, Typically you want to take your ring light and you're going to place it so that it's in front of your model. It has a lot of dials on it. Um, more or less centered, right, on their face or their grill, depending on, you know, that's another name for it. Um, and then you're basically going to shoot your camera through the middle of it, right? This is going to create an even light, right? Light all the ways around. That is going to create a very flat light and one thing that we're gonna talk a bit about, and I do a lot when we're doing lighting seminars, is shadows, right? Where are your shadows, right? Well, the shadows are the, the opposite of where the light is. So if the light is directly in front of her shooting this way, all the shadows are back here, right? So 
depending on your situation, that could create essentially no shadow because the wall will be so far back that it'll just get dark, or maybe you're lighting the wall with something else, or there's a window back there or something, um, or a shadow from the ring, which is kind of a popular look, especially kind of a fashion feel where you get the shadow around the person, that round shadow, um, which we could try that too. We're gonna do a few different things with this. Um, so anyways, we line up our ring light, we shoot our light through, it's gonna be nice and even. This is gonna be a nice light when you, don't, when you wanna kill all the shadows. Now, why would I wanna kill shadows? Well, shadows show texture, right? So if you're photographing something that has texture and you don't want it to have texture, let's say an older person's face, this might be nice to fill in, right? That's often, it's okay, you okay? Do you need some water or something? No, thank you. Okay, because I will sell you water. It's one of my, that's my other business. <laughs> Besides doing this, I also sell water um, and also uh, popcorn. Halfway through, I'll walk up and down. Okay. <laughs> so the way that I, I primarily would use a ring light is as a fill, right? I light my model however I'm gonna light them, and then I have this fill light coming in from the front. That's how I would normally use it, but since we have a $100 kit going, we only have the ring light. And some people, for very dramatic feel, like to use it as their only source. That's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna use this light. One thing we're gonna have to do, which I just realized, is we're probably gonna have to kill a lot of the lights in here. We'll take a shot first. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, well. Thanks, Seth. This is Seth, by the way. Um, so you probably don't want to look right at it because it's going to feel really bright. So you want to look at the camera. This is one thing you want to tell people, especially with a ring flash. Because oftentimes people will look, yes? Why do you put it so close? Why do I put it so close? Why do you put it so close? <laughs> no, okay, good. That's a good question. Why do I put the light so close? Okay, Okay. I'll cover that in a second. The closer your light is to your subject, the bigger it will be, right? Bigger light is softer light. Softer light is gonna be more gentle on the face. So in almost all cases in lighting, you wanna put your light as close as you possibly can. Now I can't put it any closer really. I think this is pretty ideal because number one, the stand would start to bounce off her knees, but also because it's a ring light, it might actually go past her, right? So I'm putting my light here um, so that I'm getting even coverage across her face and still be relatively soft. Does that make sense? That's why I put it so close. Now, the other question about backing up so it doesn't hurt our eyes, that would probably work except for the fact that LEDs are point sources. So usually if you stare at them anyways, they're gonna bother you no matter how far away. They'd have to be really far before it'd be a problem, before you take care of that. So you should never really stare at LEDs. It's just not good for your eyes. But, but my point with a ring flash is that a ring flash is very powerful and you don't see any light coming out of it until you use it. So sometimes people will, instead of looking in the lens, let's say they look at the photographer or something, they're looking over the lens, sometimes the ring flash will blind them. And it can be really, not permanently blind, obviously, but it can be really uh, disorientating on the model. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so yeah, with a ring flash, make sure you tell the model, especially to look at the lens and not the flash. With this, you know, you can look at the light if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. All right. So. I mentioned to Seth about turning off the lights in here, but he said, oh, do a shot with it on first, so I'll do that. Um, so we're gonna use the meter in our camera, right? Our, every camera has a meter in it. That, ooh, should we just use aperture priority? No, Dave doesn't like that. Right, so we're gonna leave the lights on for a second. One of the disadvantages, I'm gonna talk advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, the main advantage of this is that it's cheap, right? Also, relatively shadowless light, kind of a cool uh, feel, it has a dimmer in it. So we can adjust it, right? If we want to use it more like, uh, you can leave them on for now. So, yeah. yeah, so he's gonna use the meter camera to set our, our exposure to start with. Now remember, any light meter, whether it be the one in your camera, a flash meter, the using TTL with a flash, is gonna give you what it thinks is the right exposure. You have to determine, as the photographer, if that's how you like it or not, right? If my meter says F8, and I shoot it and it looks too dark to me, then what am I gonna do? I can open up or whatever, or give it more light. But that's up to me. Okay, so yeah, she looks pretty evenly exposed. So here she is, and you do get that cool ring effect in the eyes, no extra charge for that, right? And depending on how far away it is, it would be bigger or smaller. You could actually get it closer, possibly. They're asking which ring light. Okay, so this ring light is actually, I did actually do this because one of the things here is, I'm sure people are probably curious about what these actual things are. This is the Flashpoint 19 inch LED ring light. Um, it does come with a bag, which is always nice. And it's an AC powered light, so we have it plugged into the wall. 
and it is dimmable. So there we go. We are at daylight. We are 100 ISO. We are 1 80th of a second at 4.5. That's not terrible. That's pretty bright, actually. Now, there is other light in the space, right? So it's competing with our light a little bit. You might be okay with that. This actually doesn't look terrible. Let's just kill as much light as possible. Because typically when we're using hot lights, we want to try to turn off as many lights as possible. When I say hot lights, I mean constant light sources. The reason for that is we want to be in total control of our light. So let's kill all the light and see what we get now. Let's shoot the same exposure to see how much of it was the... How was that exposure again, please? This was uh, 1 80th of a second, f4.5, 100 ISO. Ah, there you go. Actually, didn't change much. Just a little background. Yeah. Background. background got a little bit darker. So most of that light, so this is actually a much brighter light than I, I thought I'd never used this light before. Because um, why would I try it first, right? It's live. We have to just go for it. Um, it's pretty bright, so actually we're overpowering a lot of light in the space. This might be useful if you're in a daylight space as well. Like I said, it's a daylight balanced light as a fill. Um, you do definitely see that, I think, that there's not a whole lot of shadow going on here, right? Because the shadows are straight back, right? So we don't see any shadows on her face, except for right here slightly behind her nose because it's going straight back, right? Yeah, no, 4.5. And we see no shadow here, but we, we can see it here right around the little pearl, that little circle, that's our shadow, right? So we can, let's see how close we can get it, because now I'm curious. Oh, why did my screen move? It's gonna put the channel ball a little bit. Okay, yeah, we can bring the channel ball up a little bit, because it didn't seem like it was affecting it that much. Well, let's bring it in closer and see what we can do. So I'm gonna, also when we do this, you know the model can't run, because now we have it trapped. So if you have models that might try to take off, this is a good way to kind of keep them confined. Uh, obviously, it's closer to her, it's gonna be brighter. If you love the exposure, like you won't, for some reason wanna shoot at that exact setting, we can dim the light. But I always feel like more light is better, especially with constant light sources, yes? What do you mean by daylight balance? Oh, good question. So, your camera has a white balance setting, right? So, daylight would be around 5500, depends on your camera, uh, Kelvin, versus let's say indoor or tungsten white balance setting, which would be 3200. So it's, ba it's balanced with daylight, meaning that if we were to shoot it, let's say with a window in the shot, it would be the same color, right? If it's the only light you're using, it's not that relevant. If it's mixing with other lights, it becomes a lot more relevant. There we go, now it's closer, we get an even bigger ring, right? And again, the light's wrapping around, and because it's closer to her, the background's slightly darker, even though we turn the lights back up, and you've got this kind of wash of light, right? Really even. You know, if you, you, people can't see online, but Maddie is covered with wrinkles. She's like about 87 years old. She's got a lot of wrinkles. They're all gone. No, that's not true. Okay, questions about the basic concept of the ring light. I would probably, do one where you like kind of put your chin forward so we can see if we can create a little bit of shadow. Yeah, yeah, push your head. Also in the video, it looks cool. If you ever want to look cool, the ring light's perfect. Just throw it in the corner, turn it on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the question is, what would happen if we moved the light further back? Well, except for the fact that it would also be darker, um, the ring would get smaller. It gets bit bigger and smaller based on the thing. If you don't like, oh, what happened there? Right, now, that's, that's what I thought. So she projected herself slightly forward. We have the light really close to her. So what happened, this is what I was saying before about the light being too close. The light went past her, right? She's coming out of the light. So we must keep that in mind. I mean, you could do that as an effect, I'm sure. Actually, uh -oh. right, all right, we can put it behind her, okay, let me, let me undo the cable here. Yeah, I think we're going to have to use a little. Since I only spent $69 on my light, I can add extra stuff to the, to the kit. <laughs> now, normally Seth sells these for $300, but for this particular session, he's gonna give us a discount. All right, so we're gonna actually, actually having two of them would be cool. Do you have two? Oh no, Fernando took the other one. Yeah, I would like to have another one. It's important to use as much cardboard as possible in all photo shoots. Essentially from the sides, actually. Just, you think sides? Yeah, yeah. like that? Yeah. 
Cool. Even better. Now she's really trapped. We don't know what's going on in there. That's okay. We don't need to know. Wow. Okay. I have to... This is going to be a tricky exposure for the camera, so we're going to have to take some and see what happens. Yeah. I'm going to try wide open just to see. And we're going to shoot wide open, because why not? We paid a lot of money for this lens. I don't know. I can't see it. I'm just trusting Dave. Can you try to and then cut. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. No. And shift this way a tiny bit. And then turn this. Yeah. There we go. A little more. There we go. And then chain up a little. Okay. Okay. So, it's kind of interesting. A little soft. Yeah. Because we're getting flare from the back. Yeah. Huh. Who knew? All right. Wow. All right. But what I was thinking was shoot it without the reflectors. I was just saying you, you would get the shadow. Basically, we can use the ring light you know, in various different ways. We're gonna see if we can create more interest. Now, if we wanted to balance that out, right? We can do, do a little photo math. Do this first. So first of all, that's what happens with no reflectors, right? Now what we can do is take the light and bring it further back, right? Now, bringing it further back is going to make it smaller, of course. But in addition to that, oh, also crooked, apparently. Is that better? Oh, I can see it in the lens. That's pretty cool. And then we can probably bring the reflector in. And that may help with the, with the contrast level. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's all about... A little more. Uh, a little less than that. A little more attack. A little less than Really? Well, I mean, I think something about that because it's really good enough. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Pitch. Uh, we're pretty close, so let's see how that looks. Let's we'll just see what we get. Just mess with it a little bit. Ah, okay. So, again, when you're working with, it's a little bit underexposed, but when you're working with only one light source, right? Because as we are in this case, sometimes you have to be more creative with it, right? So what did I do there? This is just like simple photo math, right? Not that one, but this one plus this one. Now, I mean, except for the fact the ring light is kind of small, it's not as bright on her cheeks because proportionately her cheeks and the cards are both further away from the light now because the light is not so close to her, right? Moving the light back, spreads it out more, right? It makes the contrast a little bit lower. So you can definitely do that. Um, the question was though, what if we don't like the, first of all, you don't like the, the circle in the eyes, I wouldn't use a ring light. So that would be the answer to that. So don't buy a ring light if you don't like the circle in the eyes. But if you did move it further away from her, so let's have you uh, jump up for a second, Manny. Just go stand, but yeah, I'll, I'll tangle you in this because that's what I do. Go ahead and stand right against the background. And then we'll back it up. We'll, do, we'll kill two birds with one stone here, to, so, so to speak. Um, this is going to make it smaller in her eyes, and then it's also going to show us the, the kind of signature ring light um, shadow. Okay. Questions so far about ring lights? No. Okay, it's a little dark. But we definitely get two things going on here, right? We've got smaller dot in the eye, right? If that's what you like. There we go, that's a better exposure. And we've got, again, that kind of ring flash shadow that some people will like. Um, it's that kind of weird, like do something like this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna be done with the ring light in a second. People don't like ring lights, is what you're saying? No, it's not. This is actually shooting with inexpensive lighting kit, and this is just the first one I picked up. So if there's a question about that, we're gonna, we're gonna try to get some different stuff. Because basically, that's all the stuff that you do with a ring light right there. Like, there you go. So that's why, if you're only gonna buy one light, I probably wouldn't buy a ring light, but hey. <laughs> let's just say, though, that this is the light that you bought because you were cool and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get a ring light. So now you've got this thing and you gotta make it work. So, so come forward. You don't have to use it the way that it was designed, right? It was designed to use it like this, but it's a light. A light is a light. I can do anything I want with it. I could take my ring light, 
And I can use it like this, why not? The model's gonna be like, why are you using the ring light like that? You know what, don't ask me. <laughs> right, we can put it, because it is a light, right? It's still a light, it's still throwing light. We can put the light wherever we want to put it. And if I want to put it here, this is just now a side light. Yeah, it's like a little bit of a side light. Now, it is, it's a, it's a, a tricky thing because it is kind of still a relatively small source because it's so little like this, but because of its size, because there's a big hole in the middle of it, it spreads out. So we've got a lot of coverage, right? We, even though the shadows themselves are hard, right? You see that hardish thing here? It's actually filling itself because it has a second light. It's almost like using two lights when you do this, right? So it's interesting. It creates a different feel to it, right? We can definitely create something like this. I mean, I could also, oh yeah, we could do it like a beauty dish. We could do like a typical beauty style shot, bring it up and over to do like a butterfly. Is that what you're thinking? Yep. Yeah, yeah we could do that. Why not? Again, we're using the, yeah, it is on a tiny stand, so we might not be able to do it. Luckily, we have a relatively tiny model. You have to always buy your stands based on the height of your models. Right? I have an entire selection of stands. Whoever model shows up, I look at them, I pick the stand out. So now we can do more of like a butterfly lighting. So by butterfly, I'm talking about the lighting that is kind of central and above. It creates the little shadow under the nose. It's kind of a classic beauty light. It's my favorite way to light women. Why? I'll tell you why. Well, because it's even across the face, right? We don't typically like a lot of shadows on, on a female face. And then also it helps narrow the face and extend the neck because the way the light falling down will help kind of bring the face in. Also, wasn't it just a big boxing match? Did you see that? Did you like boxing? I didn't see it either. Who saw the boxing match? No, Seth. Okay. All right, cool. So now we've got this, uh, well, anyways, I was gonna say it could be like a ring. You know, do they still that in boxing when they have somebody come out in the middle with a different, okay, good. Card girl. All right. Now, we've got our light. We've got the, the, the classic butterfly look. The shadow's a little bit dense, so if we want, we can bring a little reflector in for fill. It's not Phil. Her name's not Phil. No, her name is not Phil. <laughs> it's Phyllis. <laughs> okay. Right? Now we've got now we're filled in, right? So now this is a ring light, right? So this is a ring light. And that's a ring light, right? Classic ring light feel, flat, no shadows, a little bit more kind of traditional shot, right? This is the light we got, so we got to work with it. Now, we could also steal from our other kit an umbrella, let's say. Why not, right? I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go like this for now. Just like hold it. Uh, you know, a little, a little tape or something. Umbrellas are really inexpensive, right? Is that touching your head? No, it's touching you. No, it is. It's touching. I can see it. Okay, yep, okay. Rotate it. Uh, there you go. Okay. Oh, I probably I could also do the card, but the union doesn't allow me to do two things at once. <laughs> right? Now I've got the umbrella to make the light softer, right? A little bit creamier. Let's get the fill as well. Thank you. You could probably hold that. Yeah, we'll make her hold it. Usually I just grab people from the street to hold stuff, it's easy. <laughs> Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Got to give encouragement for the models, it's important. <laughs> right, now, okay, again. Now we've got another shot, right, with the beauty light, with the ring light, rather. This is now much more traditional, and I'm probably still, all right, I might be skirting $100 a little bit more now, but the umbrellas are cheap. So, questions about this before we move on to a different kit? No, all right, good. So now, all the people that always say, why don't I ever use a ring light? You got it, I did it. Moved on, moving on. So this is the Flashpoint ring light, pretty good. 
We got a few different looks from it. Again, you can get that really specific beauty light look, a ring light look, and then you can go all the ways to kind of a more traditional look as well, depending on what you're working with, right? But for the for my money, I'm gonna show you the kit that I like. This kit here, and you can get this particular one is a little bit over $100. Um, it's from Smith Victor. You can get a single light kit, but in the scheme of things, having two lights is, a, is much, uh, much more versatile, kind of the bucks. This guy is uh, yeah, look at that. I got the box. This is a two two light kit, right? It looks like in the picture they have more than two lights. Yeah, they do because I think they use the same box for all the kits. So this is the thrifty kits from from Smith Victor. So these are basically what you call photo flood lights, and you could get a whole kit like this. You could also buy stuff independently, one piece at a time, depending on your budget and how what you need. Essentially what a photo flood light and a photo is, is that it's one of these bowl reflectors, right? So you've got an aluminum bowl that is polished inside. They polish these 400 times per square inch. <laughs> inside is a socket, right? The socket could have just about anything in it, but what kind of the, what it comes with and what I think is much nicer is a, it comes with a, uh, well, hopefully the tacos I was eating earlier won't put grease all over my hands and kill this bulb. This is a photo flood bulb. Looks like a regular light bulb. Color correct, 3200 Kelvin, 250 watts, available as 500 watts as well, okay? This is important because if you're mixing them with other types of light, you have actual control. You know exactly what the color temperature is, right? Very fragile, but cheap. Oh yeah, you ain't lying. All right, here we go. I'm gonna wipe it off because oils from your hands can cause them to explode, which is pretty spectacular, but then it'll cost me more money and you know, we don't wanna, we're on a budget in this shoot. All right, so I will say this, these lights, these bulbs are designed to give you like 10 hours or so of use, so you will replace them quite frequently if you buy this. This kit is for somebody who is going to not uh, be working all the time, because if you were, you'll end up in a year spending more money on bulbs if you buy photo floods. You can get halogen systems that are gonna be more expensive that will last a lot longer uh, bulb-wise. So again, that's the drawback. Uh, potential uh, bonus to it is that just the, one of these by themselves is like 30 bucks. I mean, you can, you can get into this very inexpensively. This kit's a little over 100 though, with two of them, with stands, with umbrellas, with a little thing in my hand. By the way, that's, a, that's how you don't lose those things. Every, every single, oh, Chris. I got your cup holder, and somehow we, we did a whole big thing about the cup holder last time, and then uh, Seth, actually, last week, if anybody noticed, Seth, I have to call you out on it, because it's funny. Let's do this. He, 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 he live-streamed onto somebody's personal <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> so, yes, that was, that, that was amazing. So, there you go. So, we did actually, so they know all about it. But thank you for the cup holder. We're trying to figure out what did we had on the, on the tripod last we week. Did, yeah, we lights there. On the light stand, we can put it here. So this is a pretty cool cup holder that was given to me uh, by Christopher Knight. Thank you. Let's put it goes right on the light stand. It has its own, has its own it's stand. It's gonna have its own stand. It has its own stand. We're we're going for it. Oh, he's so, so excited. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, you gotta loosen it up. Yeah, I'm gonna loosen it up. So yeah. Put this on here. Thank you for your coffee. Yeah. Or like a bottle of water. Yeah, I'm gonna tighten it up. There we go. Nice, right? <laughs> I'm gonna tighten this up like this. Oh, I'll so put my coffee on there. It's like C stand. There we go, on a C stand. There we go. We'll put it right there. Now it's no longer on his laptop. Yes. All right, so anyways, back to this. <laughs> now, you can find things that look like this at hardware stores, right? Yeah. The biggest difference is these are designed to take high wattage bulbs. If you buy one at a hardware store, don't put these bulbs in it. You can still use them. Just use the 60 watt bulbs or whatever you can buy at the hardware store. If that's where your budget's at, you do it. It'll, it'll, you can do a similar thing. Don't put a 250 watt bulb in a hardware store one that's not able to take it because you may cause a fire, which is never a good thing unless you're a pyromaniac or an arsonist. Okay. 
So we're going to go two different ways. First of all, we've got our basic photo flood, which is kind of a classic uh, uh, Helmut, ne Helmut Newton. People know who Helmut Newton is? Right, he used to do a lot of stuff with, with photo floods. Hard light, punchy, you know, uh, we'll use it like this first and then we'll add a, an umbrella to it, which is probably going to be more of a traditional way of working. Um, I guess I'll just plug it in over here. All right, so, boom, in. Now, super simple. We got our bulb, we put our hand in front of it, we tell our model, hey, don't look at the light. Boom, now she's lit up, right? This is tungsten. So we're changing our white balance on our camera to incandescent, tungsten, indoor. Depending on your camera, it might be called different things. This is gonna be, it's 12 inches, right? So it's gonna be, relatively speaking, a hard light, especially if I back it up. If, if we have Maddie come closer, don't be afraid of the light. Come into the light, Maddie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so we can use this hard light source, right? And we can either do something very dramatic over here. One cool thing about this, about using uh, constant light sources, especially kind of bright ones in somebody's face, is that it will cause their, their pupils to get really, really tiny. And then you get all the nice color in their eyes. So Maddie's got beautiful brown eyes. They're, they're going to be like almost like see-through or not. Or they'll be super overexposed. That's, there's always like four shots on every roll of film I ever have that that's what they look like at the beginning. I'm like, what happened there? See, with digital, you don't have that anymore because right? you see them right away. That's a, is it loaded and you shoot yourself with the flash? With Polaroids. With Polaroids. <laughs> All right, so we're setting our white balance to tungsten. We're figuring out our exposure. This is gonna be probably brighter, as we can tell. It's a lot brighter. Yes, I, I'm not sure. If you want a couple older, you gotta speak with Chris. Chris. <laughs> it's really nice, actually. I feel like it would hold a, a bottle of water. Oh, there you go. It's for our bike, so I can go mobile with it. Oh, interesting. Right. Now, it's still a smidge dark, but. All right. Let's ask her. How physically warm is it for you? It's good in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good in the winter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely warm. Again, we can see her eyeball. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's 250 watts, right? So it's gonna be warm. This is the one thing that people seem to dwell on a lot with hot lights. It's never been a problem for me. Just turn the AC on in your studio. But you can see her eyes this is the point I was making. Look at how brown they are. Wow. That's somebody's eyeball. All right, so there we go. All right, so you notice it's got, by the way, um, tungsten light is some of my favorite type of light for skin reproduction because the skin tone is just really, really nice. You can't, you guys are getting, not getting, not getting the best of the best here because you're in the audience here because you have the several TVs, but. Um, if you look on my computer, that one's not so bad. it's close, but it's not exactly right. Yeah. So you get beautiful, beautiful skin tone with, with tungsten lights. It is warmer, um, but you know, hey, it is what it is. All right. So how are you feeling? Feels good, right? Yeah. Now, because we have two lights, right? We can do all kinds of stuff with two lights. Oh, and by the way, you can get, because this is a common question I'll get, uh, other, you can go up to 500 watts, but you can get less powerful lights as well. Um, just make sure your color temperature is gonna match. They make 125s. You can also put a dimmer on it, right? So you can control your power. But if you add a dimmer to a tungsten light source and you start to dim it down, the color temperature will become warmer. Your light will become more orange in the spectrum. That may or may not be a problem for you. If you're using one light, and you're gonna do a custom white balance, it's not an issue, right? Using multiple lights, there could be a problem to match them, right? That would be your, the downside to it. That's not saying not to do it. Yes, if you use fluorescent bulbs in there, I hate you. No, <laughs> fluorescent is, unless you spend money for like the good Kino Flow bulbs, fluorescent is like one of the worst possible things you can use on skin. It's an, uh, fluorescent bulbs uh, have a, 
a terrible color spectrum. They, they, they're missing colors. So they often make skin tones look weird. Or, and I, by the way, I have a personal hatred of fluorescent because I always look like a ghost under fluorescent. Because I have a lot of red in my skin and fluorescent tends to shift to the green and it, it wipes it out. The, the, yeah, for a certain effect it could be cool. But for a beautiful portrait, fluorescent is not what I would use. Better um, is to, best would be tungsten, good fluorescent or good LED, not cheap fluorescent. So if you get like those Kino Flow bulbs that are like 35, 40 bucks, they're not bad but they're also like 25 watts. I'm sorry. If you put a dimmer in it, yes. it became orange, you could correct the white balance in Photoshop. Correct, I'm correct on mm -hmm. that. So the question is, or it was more of a bold statement, which I liked it. <laughs> if you dim it and it was an orange, you could just fix it in Photoshop. Yeah, I mean, if you have one light, you can do that. If I dim four different lights at different ratios, I can't just adjust my white balance. That's gonna be the only downside. I'm not saying not to do it, I'm just saying that would be a downside. Not, nothing that, I mean. Yeah, I would make my key, like my light on the skin, color correct, and then I would let the rest of them go warm or cool. I mean, that's, that's what I would do personally in that situation. Um, that's the downside to a dimmer, and I'm saying that because I'm teaching you about lighting. Do I use dimmers? Yes. Do I not have perfect white balance sometimes? Yes, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't do it. But just know that that is definitely a factor because if let's say I'm photographing something where the color matters, let's say it's important. Let's say this is for a, uh, a hair salon and they just did the color, right? And now I start dimming the hair light to get it to where I want it to be and now her hair, her hair looks more orange than it's supposed to look. That's not gonna be good, right? So you just gotta keep those things in mind. What you could do with these lights as well is you could put a neutral density gel in front of it, which would reduce the amount of light coming through without changing the color. Um, they will melt eventually if you put it too close to the light, but it will work. Also, when you're using these kind of lights, be wary of how much power you're plugging in. Typical socket circuit can take 1800 watts. So 1500 is usually as far as I go, just to be safe. Um, and you don't know what else is plugged into it usually. So be wary of that. This is 500 watts total. We shouldn't be a problem, although this building is very old. Um, okay, so turn this one on. Now we've got two lights, and I can basically, and right now I'm just using the harder lights. I can move it around however I want for, for my hair. That was probably in the shot, I'm guessing. Totally yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I, I could like the back. Oh, no. Yeah. I only have snobby. Yes, yes. So, you know, however we want to do it. It's still in the shot. Oh, yeah. yeah, we can move it around. <coughs> right now I'm lighting the background slash, I can actually do this too, and light the background with it and let the edge of it hit her. Now, they do make these photo flood reflectors in different sizes, right? They make 10 inch, 12 inch, eight inch, and five inch. Smaller the reflector, the more condensed the beam is. Although I do believe that the five inch ones you can max out at 250 watts. In other words, you can't put the 500 watt bulbs in there. Okay, so now we've got light hitting her on the side, filling in a little bit, right? Again, this is all very hard light. Um, it's actually coming way too far forward because it's hitting her in the nose. It's almost never a good idea to have light hit somebody in the side of the nose. So I'll turn it. Right? All right, questions about this? I'm just wondering what, what age, what? 12. It was a 12. This is a 12, well, I'm using 12 inches. Okay. Yep, I think. I said 12 and I'm pretty sure they're 12, so you're just gonna have to say that you will admit that they are. Yeah, I think they're 12. They're either 10 or 12. Let me check, yes. Okay, that's a good question. Because it's one of those things that people ask a lot and yeah, the reason why, okay, color temperature and, and spectrum of light are two different things, right? I can have something that is daylight white balanced and still have a terrible color spectrum. Fluorescent light is missing colors. It's a discontinuous spectrum. If you look at the, uh, if you use the spectrometer and you look at most fluorescent, you'll see spikes and you'll see dips. It won't be a nice even curve, right? That's the problem. You can get tungsten colored fluorescents that are cheap that will still be junk. Like it's not the color of the light that matters, it's the spectrum. Yes, so, because the actual question was, if they're daylight balanced fluorescents, would they be better? No, definitely not. Well, 
good ones, like from KinoFlow, are good. But I think when most people ask about fluorescent, they're talking about these cheap little fluorescents that you just screw in. You gotta spend money on fluorescent if you want them to be decent uh, uh, quality color. Now, you might not care about the color. That's the other point. You might be shooting something where bad color is okay. Oh, is there a note? Seth's passed me, Seth's passed me notes. It's very exciting. Um, Westcott makes some decent ones too, I think, 50 watt ones, but KinoFlow are definitely the best, in my opinion. Uh, and I think those are 25s that, that, that you can normally get. And 25 fluorescent watts is not that much power, so just keep that in mind. Um, No. Well, good LEDs are better than bad fluorescents, but none of those are going to be as good as tungsten. Tungsten is, there's no CRI for tungsten because they don't need it. It has all the colors. Yeah, so tungsten is, is your best for skin tone rate production out of the constant light sources. And it's nice and warm. Okay, you ready? Did you make it look good? Oh, okay, cool, I'll do it. Nice. All right, that's cool. Yeah, so again, we're hitting her with hard light. This isn't necessarily what you wanna do. We're just kind of like getting the lights in position now. Let's actually make it a little bit of a nicer portrait now. Um, we've got our two lights, we can do this hard light, which might look good on a guy, right? Men usually look better with hard light. Um, although, Maddie's got good skin, so it doesn't, it's not terrible right now, but. There's detail in that white, though? There is detail in the white, actually. Would you like to see? <laughs> Right? Okay. Now. Umbrella. If you're on a budget, this is probably your, your best friend. Umbrellas are generally inexpensive um, and they're super, super versatile. What you don't get with an umbrella that you get with, let's say, a softbox is much edge control, right? My light's gonna... Oh, the police are coming again. Sorry, guys. I might, this might cut short. Oh, no, that's fire trucks. Okay, no problem. Okay, so... Um, the umbrella light's gonna go everywhere, right? We're not gonna be able to control it and keep it really tight. <coughs> this is a 30 some odd inch umbrella. I'm gonna put it on the key light or my main light on her face or her grill, depending on, you know. <laughs> That's number two. Yeah. Second time. Yeah, tighten that in. Okay. Beautiful. Now. We're making our light source larger. Making our light source larger makes our light source softer. Softer light is gonna be more gentle on the skin. The shadows are gonna kind of bleed out nice and evenly. That's really what we want for portraiture. It also technically got closer to her, assuming that uh, the light's not gonna be in the shot now. The, adding the umbrella, right, is actually putting it closer, which is making it larger too. In addition to that, because we're using a shoot-through umbrella or a translucent umbrella, we're diffusing the light, right? Diffusing the light helps control your highlights. It, it uh, reduces the contrast in your highlights. Diffusion reduces contrast in highlights. They, hard, soft, or large light sources reduce contrast in shadow. So it is possible to have a hard light that is diffuse and vice versa. <coughs> All right. So I think in this particular case, the hair light right now is, is coming too far forward, but we're gonna mess around with it a little bit. Yeah. Or we can have a turn towards the light maybe. So now we're using, again, this is the Smith Victor. I'll mention this because this is about using an expensive kit, so I should mention what the kit is. This is the Smith Victor KT500U kit. 10 inch reflectors. We'll change that in the note. We'll have to go back to the video and edit out where I said they were 12 inch, and then we'll put it back in as 10 inch. We're not gonna do that. So again, the wider the reflector, the more spread you're gonna get. Also the hotter bulb, theoretically, you could use in it. So, we're getting this all set up. There we go. Now, we're gonna mess around a little bit with the hair light, but here we go, we got a nice soft light across her face. Right, big soft versus the harder, well, let's find one with the hair light. I guess this one. This is before the umbrella, right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're gonna adjust the hair light a little bit, but we can see 
the abrupt shadows versus the, the subtle shadows of the soft light versus hard light, right? See the difference? Also the lowering of contrast overall. Right, see that? Makes sense, right? Okay. Cool. Ah, there we go. That's a pretty shot. So there we go. Now we've got, again, we're still fighting. This is, again, one of the downsides you're going to have with this versus, let's say, an ARRI where you have like the, the, the ability to focus it and change it more precisely. You know, we're going to have to watch that highlight on our nose constantly. I mean, the other thing that we could do, rather than spend more money to buy an ARRI light, is I could just flag it with a piece of cardboard. Wait, before you do that. Oh. They said no. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just hitting her in the nose. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have a black card? No, but that's a flag. A flag's like 80 bucks. I'm on a budget. By the way, that's how they get you in rental studios. You ever been in a rental studio? Like you're there at work and they're like, oh, you need a flag. And the next thing you know, you get your bill at the end of the day. It's like you're... You know what we can do? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a... Like an umbrella. We could use the umbrella. It'll hit the nose, but it'll, it'll still hit the nose, but it'll be nice stuff. and clean. Well, no, we'll work with what we got. I think Fernando stole the black card. The one lone, the one lone black card. That's not true. I'm sure he didn't. Yes. Mm -hmm. See that, right? Yeah. So the question is, what was the problem with the nose? Now, it's perfectly acceptable to just work her that way. It's still touching her a tiny bit, right? But now I'm limited as to what I can do, right? I don't want to be limited. I want to be able to turn her wherever I want to turn her. So I'm going to try to make my light better. Now, the light with the umbrella is going to spread out more. It's touching her nose. But the contrast level is so much lower, and now it's much more acceptable. Right? Make sense? That's why we did that. Yes. Listen, I wouldn't want to give you a half done product. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the gray tube. It's okay. It's nice. Like, it's a little gray. that gradation. Yeah. It's bouncing around. It looks nice. I mean, you could mess around with this a lot of different ways. If you had an umbrella that wasn't translucent, you could scoop the umbrella the other way and try to keep it, like, more coming forward. Uh, but we don't. So, this is what we got. Questions? Thoughts? Concerns? Oh, well, you looked when I said concern. I was getting worried there. <laughs> Not bad. Okay. If you had to go, if you had to choose between softbox and umbrella, would you choose umbrellas? Well, so the question is, would you choose softboxes over umbrellas or vice versa? I mean, at this price point, you're not going to be able to afford a softbox, probably. So that made a decision for me. It really depends. I mean, I, I guess it depends on the work you're doing. Softboxes will give you a lot more edge control. If I'm working with fewer lights, I often go with umbrellas because I want to cover more area, right? So it is a hard, it, it's a hard thing. Like, I don't want to not give you an answer, but I would say that I probably use a softbox more often than an umbrella um, if I have it. But umbrellas are good for certain things. And I shot for years with only umbrellas um, because I was a broke photographer starting out and didn't have any money. So, I mean, umbrellas are super cheap. You can do a lot with them. We could do this, right? We could take the umbrella here. What you're not going to be able to do, well, actually Dave can do it, but we're not going to spend the time to do it, uh, is it'll be very difficult to get the background, let's say, black using an umbrella. Whereas if I had a softbox in about two minutes, I could get that, that, that background black, right? And still have a nice soft light. I get the background black using the hard reflector, right? But I'm not going to be able to get it... The, it's, it'll be able to go dark but by back, backing it up and using our uh, inverse the inverse square law. You know, but we, you can get it really. In fact, we have a video. Um, on Adorama TV. So if you have if you watch Adorama TV, um, I'll go to the onset playlist and there's one. I think it's called subject to background distance, or, or possibly it's called yeah. Or possibly it's the one with the umbrellas, but we actually make a, we use a translucent background and we make a black background. 
it's either called um, something with umbrellas or it's the one with subject to dis subject to background distance. It's one of those two videos where we actually shoot. I'm pretty sure the subject subject to background distance. I show you the white wall white with only one light, and then I show you how to make it darker. And, and basically, we use the inverse square law. Right, I'm gonna put these like this. This is my plan. I think I'll put it here and just put them both in the back. Ooh, it got very dark all of a sudden. All right. So we're plugging these guys in here. There we go. Okay, boom. Now, I'll bring these lights into the front. We're using the inverse square law, so we're back in our whole setup as far as we can. Background should theoretically get a little bit darker because the lights are closer to her, right? I'm also doing the double light in the front thing, which is going to create a large source of light in the front, almost like one single light source kind of wrapping around her whole face. In fact, we kind of want to get them as close as possible. Is that the shot? Um, yeah, we'll show, frame yourself up first. So typically we want to frame our shot up, and then we're going to basically move the lights in until... And this, by the way, the reason why I'm doing this is this is a specifically an umbrella thing. Because I could get a big softbox to get the same amount of light, but then I wouldn't be able to be inside of it. See here, I'm literally... I don't know if you can see that. Can you turn on that camera? so? You see how Dave is like in the, in the umbrellas? The, the lens is in here. Yeah. So he's literally inside of his light source. Kind of like the ring light, except way better. Well, we'll see when we see the picture. Hopefully way better. I'm making a prediction. Was that the question? That was the question, right? Did I kind of answer it and not even in a way that I, okay. That wasn't even close to the right answer, right? Okay. It's not really a question. Yeah. That's right. You, 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 you were trapping me. <laughs> For fishing? Yeah. Oh, that would also be cool. But that, oh, like you, you put it on your, your reel? Nice. There we go. A little, it's a little under, but you still right. got black Big, back. even. Background is dark. She's like, getting up in my grill. Let's see, it's nice, even light. And actually what's cool about this is we can control the contrast of our light by raising them, right? And lowering them to, to, to change the shadow pattern. And we can also drop the lights forward or flat, right? So like if I want, I can pitch the lights a little bit. If I pitch them more forward, and then I raise them up, Not yet. All right, so we're gonna get, we're adding contrast now, right? Questions? Oh, my coffee holder? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, if you use a parabolic umbrella, can you control the edge light better? Well, if it's really a parabolic, like a uh, bright color para, yes, for sure, because you can focus the light in and out. Any umbrella, you can slide the head closer or further away, and that will control the edge a bit, but never like a softbox. So, but that is a good question. Because remember, when the light gets, the light's coming out, right? So it hits the end of the umbrella and it just goes, right? In most softboxes, there's a bit of an edge to it. So what, what ends up happening is, it's almost like, right? And that's blocking the, the, the direction of light. That's the reason why the softbox does that for you. In fact, I have a, uh, which is one of my favorite softboxes. I have a Shamir softbox that I use a lot that is a flat front, doesn't have the recess, and it throws the light everywhere just like an umbrella. So it actually has a much more umbrella-like quality. You know, we went a little hot on that one. It's getting hot. <laughs> Goes up and down. So by raising it, it gave a more lighter in the background. Well, mm, yeah, it's spread, it's, yeah, a little bit. What's well, creeping past her a little bit more? Not really. What we're really doing is changing the shadow pattern. Right now the shadow is going down. It's actually dark-ish. And then we're gonna to wanna to add a, a fill, fill card. There it is. 
right? And this fill card is going to give us that, uh, that fill. <laughs> wow, how exciting. I know. Fill, man. That was actually pretty good. I didn't, I, I didn't go, even though I said I was going to. I, I feel bad. It, it's still up. Now I feel even worse than I'm, I'm not going to go. So you should have <laughs> just let me, like, Okay, so now we've got this nice, creamy, even light across her, right? Shadows are filled in. Background is dark-ish, though not black. Who does? She hates me? Okay, yes. using this setup, would it be possible to also take a full-body shot? Sure. Maddie, could you come back here? Oh. That was a test to see if you're paying attention, and you weren't. <laughs> okay, so can we shoot a full body shot with this? Sure, let's shoot a full body. You can hold that like a, like a, like a, like a, yeah. More like rotate piece? Yeah, you should hold it like that, because that'll be hilarious. <laughs> what do you mean, like, like shoot bouncing? Or, or, or are you saying it out? Exact same lighting setup, or, or whatever? No, yeah, yeah, let's just do the same thing. Oh, with me too. Yeah, I'm just gonna spread them out a tiny bit. We'll put them a little closer. In fact, using two umbrellas is kind of like one of the better ways to shoot full length stuff, because it spreads the light so much, right? These are a little bit high, so we're gonna get a... Am I doing a full body? Yeah, shoot full body. Why not? The evenness of the light is gonna actually help us here. We might wanna lower them a little bit because, you know, Maddie is, is pocket size. Right, so we're just gonna drop these down a little bit. More for coverage than anything else, not because we need to. If it was a taller person, I could have left them where they were. It just wasn't necessary for them to be that tall. Uh, other questions besides that, while we're doing that for you? Do you want me to juggle? I can do other things too, just ask me. We can do any kind of trick. Actually, I cannot juggle. My coordination level is very low. This is a great cup holder. I am, I am, you know what I want to do? I, want, I gotta put this here. And then I need something here, like a monitor or something. Yeah. Yeah, just so I could see myself well, that's and be what like. This is essentially with a couple. Right. <laughs> Except this is cooler. I mean, you're saying just for your coffee, nothing more. Yeah, I often do that. It's like when you do that rental order and you order the extra Apple box just to sit on. Yeah, so you can see. I mean, obviously the environment isn't great. Right, but we've got nice even light across her. Right, she's lit right down. She gets a little dark at the bottom, but it's, it's definitely acceptable. I mean, we could play around to get it more even, but you certainly could definitely shoot a, a full length shot with it. We'd have to bring we could do one high, yeah, one we could high. do one high, one low. There's a lot of ways we could do it. Yeah. Actually, we could do that. Let's do let's do one sided and one high, one low. So let's go low with that one. And then I'll go, we'll put them both on the same side too. So we'll make like stackable light. We'll make one big light. More or less. Whoa. That should be somewhat close. Good. Other questions? No. Cool. All right. I'm doing pretty good. Now, I purposely didn't use flash for this, although I was thinking we might, meh. You could use flash, right? This that you could get, although the probably, now we're getting, okay, so that's a little bit low. Yeah, we've got to raise the whole thing up. This one's just too bright because you're getting edge. Yeah. This light is actually creeping past the umbrella. It is. Oh, okay. We gotta push it back a bit. Yeah. Yeah, we, we basically have our low light closer and brighter than our top light. Also, brighten up the whole limit. Yeah, I mean, that would be it. All right. So, I was saying something, I forgot what it was. I'll think of it in a second. There we go. So again, we're just like roughly showing you what you can do. Now we're not making it perfect, but now we've got a large light lighting again her whole body by stacking the two umbrellas. So you've got a couple of options. 
right? But it's, it's definitely doable. Cool. Oh, the flash, that's what I was saying. So typically if you wanna be like in the $100, and I wanted to give you the whole kit for around $100, so this is we, uh, you're gonna to wanna to use something, maybe a secondhand flash, because most new flashes are gonna cost you somewhere close to $100 for a decent flash, like the entry level uh, flashes. But we did grab a, although I didn't get the cord to fire it, so I don't think we can use it yet, but we did get this Vivitar. So remember there's millions of, millions, there's millions. There's lots of different flashes. Like this is a Vivitar 283. Right, this flash is like 30 or 40 bucks used. And it's flash, it works. You're gonna have to work manually, right? You're not gonna be able to, a lot of times you guys see me use this Canon and I throw the 600s on there and I start doing all kinds of fancy stuff. Yeah, this is gonna require a little more effort on your part, but this will work. You could take this and put it in an umbrella, you could take it and hold it in your hand, you could do anything you could do with a regular flash, but it does not have TTL. It, you can either set it manually or it uses uh, what's called an automatic mode which means that the flash itself reads the sensor. So it'll still give you, you set your camera basically at an aperture, you set the flash at an aperture, you put it out there and it gives you a proper exposure. This, again, you can have these for anywhere from, you know, 30 to like $100 depending on what, what shape they're in. And this is another viable solution if you want to be uh, inexpensive to start with, to use a, a used flash. All right, so something else you guys want to see since we went so fast. We were flying. Yeah, we're killing it. Okay. I do want to mention my little cue card here. <laughs> so at like, what do we go? We're after, at around of like 4.30ish when the next event ends, if you guys aren't sticking around, we're going to do another little live stream on my Facebook where we're going to say the stuff we're not allowed to say on Adorama. So if you guys want to check that out, <laughs> tune in there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that and answer, just answer questions more directly. But let's do one more really fun thing. What do you want to do? Me. What's, what's the other one? Session two. Oh, at session two at three o'clock, we're going to go on Facebook. Is that happening? Yeah. We're going on Adorama's Facebook. We're blowing up today. All right, let's do, let's do a clamshell. Yes, perfect. So let's say that we're doing, let's say we're going to do, what's that? Yeah, yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to say hot. So we're going to do a clamshell lighting. One, one final lighting to do with this one because we want to do every possible types of lighting. Actually, let's do the quick thing. I'm going all over the place now. We're gonna, go, we're gonna do three lighting setups really quickly. Rembrandt. Oh, yeah. Let's do a Rembrandt look with the light first, right? So Rembrandt lighting is where you get the little triangle of light. So come a little bit closer, ready? So I'm gonna use just one light for this. You can do a lot of other things. You can add hair lights and stuff, but just your basic pattern. I don't normally do this, but for you, I'm doing it today. So to get your Rembrandt -y light, you want to kind of bring, yeah, it wants to be somewhat hard. So we want, what we want is not necessarily hard light, but we want light to be, to have really direct fall off, right? So what we want is, oh, I think the umbrella looks straightforward. We can use the umbrella. Yeah, maybe I'll, tell, maybe I'll go no umbrella. Yeah, the umbrella is actually giving us too much wrap around, so I think we'll go no umbrella. Yeah, she likes this better. So we want to point the light at the audience so they hate me. This is gonna be a little bit more dramatic. Now, I when I use this, I like to, I tend to, you can do it a lot of different ways, but I tend to like to have the model looking slightly off, so maybe look here a little bit. Yep. And then the trick here is to create this triangle of light, right? This way, sorry. You can't see my hand probably right there. You want to create this triangle of light right here. That's kind of the key. So then bring your eyes right here, right? And that's what we're doing. We want to try to connect, if you can, that dot. We got a little bit of a triangle. I think it needs to come forward a little bit. There we go. That'll be close, I think. And then we just have to get proper exposure, obviously. I leave that to Dave. I'll come over here. So you want to create the triangle of light. I'm going to show you. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. Basically, you want this triangle of light. This is going to create a... a there is an exact way to do it, but listen, we don't exact things here on set. We just go with the flow. Well, that's how it's going to be. Shoot. Yeah, because people are going to move around. Unless, unless you're painting somebody, it's hard to make it exactly stay. Okay, so, no. We need a little bit more light around the front. Yeah, the exposure is a smidge dark. Actually, let me just move the light too, because I kind of want to. 
I just want to angle this thing over here a little bit. Nice. Okay. There we go. A little up. Depending on how the person's face is going to actually affect this a lot. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. All right. There you go. That's kind of working. I think so. I'm just going to. Oh, sorry. I'll let it go a little on the bright side. Yeah. Just so we can see that better. Yeah, there we go. Right. So, this is your basic Rembrandt pattern. You can play around with it a lot, but you get that triangle uh, on that side of the eye. Typically, you want to keep the shadow from the nose a little bit more narrow um, if you can. But it kind of comes down to one problem with the photo flood is that I don't have as much control. With like an area or something, I could really tighten it up, but this is such a wide throw, like a five inch reflector probably would work better. But we're getting the general feel of it. Now, even if you were gonna do this, I tend to wanna throw a reflector in there just to fill it in because I feel like you just want the, yeah, there we go. Yeah. And then let me just bring the, uh, the shadows up a smidge with the reflector. Because again, you want it to be a nice shot. Right? Yeah, and just fills it in, right? That's what we want. So we've got this triangle. That's kind of your Rembrandt E kind of feel, right? So again, you play around with it depending on the person's face to get that triangle to look exactly where you want it. A soft box is sometimes really nice for this. Actually, there's another use for a soft box. I actually usually like to use strip boxes for this because if you use a strip soft box, you can actually tip the box to get that triangle a little, nice, little neater. Okay, now if we do more of a butterfly pattern, that's basically your, we just did that a minute ago. That's your like right from the center, more or less. So it looks just right at the lens. And again, we want, and this comes down to again, height, getting it exactly where you want. Your, your shadow is gonna go up and down depending on the height of the light and where their chin sits. And that would be like your butterfly. Right now we got more of a butterfly feel. Again, this is my favorite uh, lighting for female models. I think it, it usually makes the face look really nice. Uh, fill card underneath is often very useful to fill in that shadow, just so we don't have such deep shadows. You could also use your umbrella as a fill card. Right? Probably do that. I think. Is that the shot? No, you're good there. Uh, that time, but actually. That should fill in a bit, with just a touch, right? The card will fill in even more because it'll be more reflective. Now, the thing we can do is we can actually do, which is what I said I was gonna do, step back for a second, watch out for the cords. Um, they're not there anymore. Um, now we're going to go into a uh, clamshell lighting. So in order to do a clamshell, what we want to do is, essentially you're doing a butterfly style light, typically in a clamshell, and then you're going to use another light. Instead of just filling in with a reflector underneath, we're going to add a secondary light source. This will give us really, really even light. Now, in an ideal world, you would be using light sources that have dimmers or flash or something like that, because then you'll have a lot more control, but this is not the ideal world. This is. This is the uh, working with what you got uh, session. So we're going to do our best to get it as nice as possible. Hmm. Is there another? Is that tall enough? That's not tall enough, right? Yeah, something's not tight somewhere, right? There we go. There we go. All right, now, the only issue here is I think that's as tall as it goes. Okay. As tall as 
All right. So again, what we're creating is kind of butterfly style light from above and then filling in from underneath. I am a little concerned. I'm a little concerned. I think we need to make her taller. Well, let's just see. You want to use the pelican? No, because the problem is I think this light is so much closer to her that we're going to get underlit. Drop so, we're, yeah, we're going to drop the legs. Yeah. All right, so remember, the closer the light is to somebody, the brighter it will be, right? Simple as that. So if, I, if my under light is too close to her, it's going to overpower my top light. So I do want to make sure I'm using the inverse square law to my advantage here. Oh, and we'll try to not break stuff in the first session. There we go. Interesting. I'm seeing a lot more brightness. From the bottom? Yeah. All right, well, we'll see what happens. How's that? That's as low as it goes. Yeah, and then tilt it, tilt it back in off. Yep. Ah. Okay. How low can you go? Let's see what this does. Why not? It does look a little brighter. Right? Mm hmm oh. Why is your bottom light so bright, Manny? What are you doing on that? What? No, no, it's pretty even. That's not too bad. Okay, so again, with other tools, we could make it, this is actually perfectly even. With other tools, we could make it even more so, like by essentially raising the power, or more or less lowering the power of the, the bottom light. I don't really have a way to bring the power down. What, what do we got? Seth usually has something. Give me something to bring the power down. Plastic bag. We can use the, the bounce card and, and block some of the light on the middle. There we go. We got it. All right, more, here we go. You want a denser one? Yeah, yeah. I want, just give me trash. Give me as much trash as possible. <laughs> Who has plastic bags? All right, here we go. That's it. Why don't you add a bag? All right, good. Uh, we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Oh. You don't blew it a little bit, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. Good. All right. Models love when you do this. You get extra money when you do this. You want pizza boxes? No, I'm good. With, I think this is enough. Yeah. All right. So this is what happens when they cut my budget. There we go. Look at that. Now. I mean, I do that because that's yeah, much better. So, I, I mean, I, I point that, I mean, it's funny, obviously we're in a store, I could just walk over and get an ND filter, but sometimes you're not, right? So what are you gonna do? That's why Seth always wears a white t-shirt, he just pulls that thing off, throws it on top of the light, done. So that's basically it, right? Anything that you're gonna put in between your light is going to affect it. In this case, white plastic bags aren't gonna hurt the light, it's just gonna, I mean, maybe we'll mess with the color a little bit, but it's not so bad, right? And we're able to get a much more balanced shot that way. Simple as that, plastic bags, you can get them at every grocery store. Just by, when you get there, be like, oh, could you bag each item separately? You know, be that person, <laughs> so you can get all the plastic bags you want. <laughs> okay, questions? No. Tissue paper also works. One dollar in tissue paper, that says. Or you buy gels from Adorama, and then between each gel, there's tissue paper, don't throw that away. Everybody throws that away. It's like, take that tissue paper, it's free. Okay, other questions? No. Okay. I think we did pretty well here. So we're going to probably cut to the live stream on YouTube. We're going to come back at three uh, and we're going to be on Facebook at three. If you want, if you missed part of this, or you just like to be on Facebook, um, Adorama's Facebook. So facebook.com slash Adorama, I guess. Um, and then at four thirty ish, we're going to go on my Facebook. So if you want to see that Daniel photographer, Seth is going to be on Mike and he's going to say all kinds of crazy stuff. We'll probably have this cup holder refilled and uh, yeah, we'll make it happen. Yes. You have a question. Oh, mine? Daniel Norton, photographer. Okay. Yeah, easy as that. I try to make life easy. So we have to be friends? No, it's, it is a business page. Yeah, Facebook.com slash Daniel Norton, photographer. Just a like on it. Yeah. Yes, you know, we don't have to be friends. I mean, I, I would like to be friends, but we don't have to be friends. Um, no, it's, it's, believe me, you don't want to be my friend. So it's <laughs> I'd be asking you for money. DanielNorton.com? What, what did you say? <laughs> Facebook.com. Yeah. Slash Daniel Norton Photographer. Oh, Daniel Norton Photographer. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good. Now, 
Sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, did you already cut the live stream? What's up? Are we still on YouTube? Oh, my bad. Okay, no. Okay, we'll see. We'll see you next week. Next week we're doing. Uh, uh, You're doing motion. motion. So, tune in next week at twelve for the live stream on YouTube, where I'll remember what I'm doing, and we're going to do motion, and that should be super fun. Although we might not have Dave next week. I'm not gonna Dave's going to be in uh, Amsterdam. You know what they do in Amsterdam? Video shows. Yeah. So they're going to do... Uh, Adorama will be... Uh, IBC, it's called? That's also a root beer. Uh, Adorama will be uh, doing stuff live from there? Live. We think. Recap. There'll be IBC videos. So if you are interested in videos, you're a filmmaker or whatever, check out Adorama's YouTube next week because they're going to be... Fernando and Dave are going to be wrecking it in uh, Amsterdam. And when's your next thing? Uh, 19th or 18th. Seth is going to teach a class on the 19th or 18th. One of those two. So just tune in both days. Oh, it's a critique. And there's a critique. 26th. On the 26th. So check out all those things. So adorama.com slash events is probably the best place. Or you can just ask me in the chat on 430. All right. Now we'll cut. Thanks, guys.